Mark, I was just looking at your uh, Wikipedia page there. I don't know if you had any involvement in it. But you have a fair bit one already, under 20, or minor All-Ireland, under 21 Ireland, uh, under 20, and a senior All-Ireland as well. You've it all done and you're what, still only 21? Right? Uh, 21, yeah. Um, it's a bit surreal when I look back and it kind of, you know, it feels like, feels like um, it kind of only happened yesterday, kind of from all of them. And um, you know, I've been lucky with Tip, the success I've had. And um, it's kind of down to all the good managers we've had up along. And uh, were you hurling all the way up when you were growing, or did you play a bit of both, a bit of everything? Um, yeah, I did my kind of my club in South Tip Kilshiel, and kind of they were kind of a big football club. So um, played a lot of football growing up, and then kind of the development squads and kind of Collins Tip minor team kind of took off from there. Then. Mm. Yeah. And you would have had uh, Liam Cahill underage there for a number of years. Um, how much of an influence was he on you? Um, he was a major influence, like him and him and Mikey Beavens and all the lads. Like they kind of, they were the first ones to kind of in an intercounty setup to kind of take me. And you know, a lot of my hurling is kind of shaped around them and the attitude they brought to train and stuff. And you know, that's the positive attitude we had to bring. Mm. And like we'll, we'll obviously get on to talk about Tipperary, but what what are Waterford getting w- with uh, with that combination? And obviously, Waterford haven't had a couple of good seasons back to back there, but um, definitely the pedigree and what they've done with your underage team is huge. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think Liam definitely brings an intensity anyway. Um, championship games, he knows he knows how to make teams perform in championship games. And um, Mikey definitely will get the best every every inch and sweat to get out of him, definitely. And whatever whatever they're willing to give, he'll, he'll definitely be willing to give more. So this Sunday just gone, you were playing for Tipperary against Clare in the Munster Hurling League, lost by a point. The thing that stood out, though, was a flick you did on the run off your boot with the hurley to set up Willie Connors for a point. How did that even come about? Um, she said, I don't know, really, it's kind of something I didn't even think about. If I probably tried to think of doing it, I'd probably mess it up. Like, so, um, I know kind of Liam just tells us to go out and kind of play with a bit of freedom and um, kind of dare things I do kind of when I'm playing with freedom. So. In, in general, would you, like, all the time, would you have always been kind of trying stuff um, when you're on the hurling field from a young age? Um, from a young age, yeah, I yeah, kind of probably tried and training more and it, it wouldn't really come off, but... Um, Kind of that's where the confidence comes from, and um, kind of when you're playing with confidence, you know it can it can lead to things like that. It's mm. great. What what about the goal you scored for UCC at the start of the year? I mean, that definitely probably announced you to a lot of people who wouldn't have heard of you beforehand. So you got the ball out in the wing and soloed past a number of people, and God knows how it ended up in the net, but it did. Yeah, she said not really how it ended up in the net, and then um, you know, I kind of just took off on social media. But um, you know, it was just great, great to kind of get a game like that in the final. Anyway, it was it was great to. Great to make your performance like that for UCC. Can you tell us about when you first got called up to Tipperary, where you were, what you were thinking? Was it a phone call? What? Um, for this year anyway, kind of Liam, Liam rang me in, um, in around October last year, and um, kind of seems a very long time ago now. Uh, it's a long year, but you know a very enjoyable year. And as kind of coming from the previous year, kind of um, with Michael Ryan, we were kind of knocked out early, and you know just get to call off Liam, kind of, you know everyone, everyone was ready to go as soon as he called us. And um, as soon as he came in, he brought he kind of brought a real atmosphere and a real a real bond between the players, and kind of that kind of grew throughout the year. Mm. So then, you know. what, what about then uh, the influence of having Eamon O'Shea? And of course, Owen Kelly, I'm sure, was most young lads' heroes uh, when they were growing up in Tipperary. What was their influence like in in around the training ground? Um, I was excellent. Yeah, kind of they they kind of wouldn't really come looking, but looking for you. But if you went looking for them, they'd be willing to talk to you all day. And especially him, and you know, with forwards and young players, he's great. You know, he um, he brings kind of a bit of a bit of a free spirit to the game, mm. and um, the kind of things that no one else thinks of. He he seems to come up with them, and you know, Owen Owen kind of has it all like from experience, and he's great for a young player like me. You know, coming up as a forwards, like he knows he knows kind of tricks of the trade, and you know, he's great to talk to. Because anyone I've spoken to that's shared a dressing room with him. When he talks, it's pure passion. People kind of perk up and listen. Is it, I, I don't know how much he would have done last year as free-taking coach, but that seems to be the message that I'm getting about him. Yeah, I think he's um, more of a kind of... He's in with the selectors now this year, and he'll, he'll have more of an influence this year, right? You know, he's, he's an awful lot to give, and um, you know, he's a real passionate about Tipperary Hurling, and kind of no doubt he'll bring, he'll bring a good... good um, Atmosphere, yeah. yeah, so you came on a number of games this year and major major impact. I'm sure scoring in the All Ireland final and the semi final, of course, was uh, was a great thrill, was it? Um, yeah, it was, it was surreal, really. Kind of the semi final was um, kind of at the time, kind of you wouldn't you wouldn't realise like how how fast it's going, but um, it was kind of great to come on and make an impact like that in a big game. And kind of thankfully the subs that day, kind of you know we were getting we were getting a lot of stick kind of up along and the younger players that 
kind of maybe we weren't doing it, but um, you know, it was great to make an impact like that in the semi final and the final. Is, is that something that would have been kind of rammed into you or something you would have been thinking about, the fact that people are saying that there's not a huge impact from the bench at the moment? Um, it kind of was a small bit, yeah, because um, kind of we were coming along, coming on in games and um, kind of we were, maybe weren't scoring or weren't working as hard as we could. And kind of, kind of Liam, Liam let us know that and he kind of let, us down, let it down to us to, to fix that. And um, kind of we knew, he told us all up along that the subs were going to finish the games and at the time you mightn't think it, but then it kind of really hit into us that if we don't, if we don't put it in, the tip aren't, going to, tip aren't going to get where they want to be. So, yeah. And what about the, the All-Ireland final and the final whistle? Even just scoring, like what was that like in, a, in an All-Ireland final? Yeah, um, oh geez, it was great, yeah. yeah. And even after final whistle, um, just, you know, to see what it means to the Tipperary supporters, you know, s- still what it means now, kind of, it brings a real good, good atmosphere to the county and uh, lifts a lot of people's spirits. So what's your aim then for this year, I suppose, knocking the likes of Seamus Callan, John McGrath, Bubbles O'Dwyer, all these boys out of the team, is going to, Jason Ford, it's going to be tough going. Yeah, um, it's going to be tough going, but um, you know, I'm just willing to make an impact for Tipperary. Um, whether, um, you know, whether, whether we win or lose or I play well or bad, it kind of doesn't, obviously Tipperary win or lose at the end of the day is, is the main priority. And um, I just kind of want to push myself as hard as I can to, to make that team and try to make a positive impact. And do you think Tipper are in a good position to, to you know, bounce back and do it again? Um, I think we are, yeah. But I think um, you know, it's it's all about next year. Kind of if we're if we're looking on the past and this year, um, teams going to catch up with us. And if we if we, if we don't change and evolve, uh, we're going to get caught. And you know, with the change coming in Munster with teams, the management of Munster, uh, we have to up our game. And if we don't, um, you know, it'll be a very early season. But um, you know, we're going to be put in the groundwork now, and hopefully that'll pay a dividend. I'm going to do a bit of a and a with you, a quick fire sort of questions. Yeah. So uh, you mightn't have an answer off the top of your head for them all, but we'll try anyway. What was your first time ever at Croke Park? Um, the first I remember is um, kind of early memories when Owen Kelly won the All Ireland with Tip in 2010. I always yeah. remember him lifting the cup, yeah. How old were you then? I suppose you were around 12 or something, were you? I see, I was around 12, yeah. yeah. Um, who's your favourite player of all time? Um, my favourite player was probably Owen Kelly. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Um, just I think the goals, like you know, the goals he scored is um, especially when you're in the crowd and the lift the crowd gets, and you know, you hop up off your seat. That's kind of all the things I remember of from mm-hmm. Kelly. Yeah. I think uh, that'd be no harm now in terms of trying to get picked this year. Picking him is your is your main man. Um, who's the most famous person that follows you online? Follows me online. Um, geez, I don't know. I don't have a clue. <laughs> okay. uh, who's been your toughest opponent ever, and why? Um, um, probably I marked Owen O'Donnell from Dublin. Um, he was a real tough player in the Fitzgibbon last year, and you know he's I think he was nominated for an All Star this year. He's, he's a real tough player to mark. Yeah, stuck to you like muck on a blanket, I'd say that lad. Um, who's the team you most like to beat? It could be club, county, college, whatever. Um, probably Kilkenny. Yeah. I love being Kilkenny. Yeah, I think it's yeah. just something about tipping Kilkenny. Yeah, there, there definitely is. What's your proudest day, Hurling? Again, um, again, it can be club, county, college, whatever. Probably say hurling. Um, it's probably after the under twenty one All Ireland against Cork. Um, you know, especially after the Munster final, we I think it was nearly fifteen or between fifteen and twenty points, and uh, we were real hurting. And um, to get a win like that was great. Yeah. What's your favourite stadium to play in? Uh, Semple Stadium. Semple Stadium. Yeah. Mm, hard to beat the good field. What's the best atmosphere you ever played in? Um, the best atmosphere was the All Ireland final. I'd say. You know, just a full house in Crow Park, you can't really beat it. And uh, kind of every score and every jeer is kind of, it feels like, you know, thousands of people. Like, it's, it's, it's you not know, it's great. What's the biggest disappointment in your career? Um, the biggest disappointment, um, probably maybe two years ago, I was dropped off to the Tipsy and Hurling team, and that was probably that was probably something I was most disappointed in. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what's the, who's the joker on the panel? Uh, joker on the panel is probably Willie Connors from Kildangan. What's he like? Um, ah, he's funny. He's he's gas. He can, uh, you know, there could be there could be something after happening, but he'll always bring up the atmosphere and he'll always uh, he'll always make jokes. Uh, who who's the best trainer? Um, this trainer probably has to be Bonner. Do you know, even even when he was coming back from a tour and crochet, he was probably still the best trainer and he's probably doing more than do more than a lot of lads. And he just seems to have this real work work ethic about him. Uh, who's the best and worst dressed? The best, no, probably Willie Connors, I'd say. <laughs> Is it best or worst? Um, kind of different from time to time. He can uh, he can go a bit adventure sometimes, and you know it doesn't pay off. <laughs> Include the tattoos. I see he's added to the palette this year. What player loves the media attention? 
Um, loves the media attention. Uh, probably Keen Darcy. Keen Darcy from Killeran. Yeah, he loves any chance of an interview. We have found some. <laughs> uh, who thinks who thinks that the women loved him? Um, who thinks that women love him? Um, just probably Brian McGrath, I'd say. For now. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, what player from another sport do you admire? Um, another player from another sport. Um, trying to think now. I like Tom Brady in American football. Mm. Do you know the way it's how old he is now, how he stays going is, is unreal. Their offense has fallen apart this year, though. The offense fallen apart, yeah. Actually, you never know in the playoffs, they might pull it out of the bag. I'm not back. I mean, he doesn't have the weapons all around him, to be fair. What manager from another sport do you admire? Um, I like Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp with Liverpool. The um, you know the, the vibe he brings with him, looking everywhere he goes. Do you know he can be sometimes be a bit of much, but um, do you know he seems to with the players he seems to bring the best out of them. Great stuff, Mark. Thanks very much. Yeah. Cheers, nowhere.